Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Rainbow. Rainbow is a two to five player trick taking poker card game in which you're going to be gathering 15 cards and playing tricks, five of them to be exact. You'll be playing a trick of two, three, four, and five, and then finally one. Try to score as many tricks as you possibly can, all while at the same time as you score tricks, you can bet tricks just like you would in poker. Betting tricks will allow you to gain other people's tricks and potentially scoring points. There's also a starting bid in which if the player who has the starting bid scores the most tricks or enough tricks based on their bid, they'll get the points for the round. However, if they don't meet or exceed that expectation, they get no points and everybody else gets points based on how many tricks they did. Rainbow is very interesting because you're going to be scoring based on the same color with different, uh, either a straight or two pair or a pair, three of a kind, full house, except for the last or the fifth, the fourth trick, which is five cards, in which case you can actually score a rainbow and a rainbow is all different colors with all of the same type of card, whether it be kings, queens, jacks, or tens. There's also some wild cards involved, which are going to have a specific type of uh, a type of card, like a king or a jack or whatnot. But of course, the wild will allow you to have different colors, which is going to be very useful for you in the game. If you can score up to 11 points before anybody else in the game, after playing a certain number of rounds, you're going to win the game rainbow. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what's in it, how to play it, and I'll give you my review. So here we have rainbow and everything you get in the game. And first of all, you're going to be getting your scorecards, which go from one to 11, 11 being the amount of points you need to win the game, as well as of course, your player reference card, which has a front, but no back, because all you need to know in the game is your hand and color rankings based on the trick that you are taking. There's the single trick, there's the second, third, fourth, and fifth card tricks. And you're gonna start with two going all the way up, and then you'll do finally the fifth trick, which is just one singular card, which is a high card. And it tells you what you can score on your tricks and the value of those specific tricks. Of course, the pair for the fifth card rankings is going to be the lowest and the highest will be a rainbow. For most of the tricks, you're going to want the same color card with the different types of, uh, of cards. So queens and aces would be a full house as long as they're all a specific color. But except for the case of the rainbow, which is only in the five card trick, which is going to be the different colors with the same type. Okay, so everybody's got their, their cards there. You're going to choose a number of players in the game. We'll just for sake of simplicity, move down to a two player game. So we'll remove green, purple, and orange. And then we're gonna set it up so that each player has simply one point to start the game. And the way I like to do it is simply to take the card here and do something like this. So it just shows that each player has one point. Make sure that you take the deck of cards here and you're going to shuffle them up really nice and good. And then you're gonna go ahead and deal out players' hands. Every player is gonna get 15 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and the rest of these cards won't be needed until the next round, in which case you're going to shuffle up and deal again. Then every player is going to go ahead and take their hand, and they're going to try and facilitate it to make it from highest to lowest. I mean, you can really do it however you want, but this is the way I prefer to do it, especially if you're a poker player, it's probably what you're going to do. And as you can see, most of the cards, or all the cards, range from either queen or ace all the way to 10. And then you're going to have the different colors of cards here. And we're almost done here. There we go. King, king, and king. In which case, let's go ahead and go ahead and organize these guys nice and easily. All right. So it'll look good. Got my aces and I got my kings. Got a lot of kings. Queens is a decent hand. Jacks and finally ten. So this is my organized hand, right? And no one's going to see the cards except for you. These are all your specific cards. But before that all happens, you're going to decide who the dealer is. And the first way you do that is take the top card of the deck and the person who draws the purple card is the person who's going to be the first, the starting player, the dealer. These cards then go to the bottom. He's the dealer. And then you're going to go ahead and do a bidding phase. So you're going to bid on how many tricks you think you can win on this round based on the hand that you have. And if this player is confident, he can bid anywhere from one trick all the way to five. But it starts with the person uh, that is left of the dealer. So this player is going to go first. I think I can win one trick. I can win two. Hmm, I think I might be able to win three tricks, in which case he can choose to pass and anybody else can choose to pass as well. The player who bids the highest is going to be the person who's going to be uh, based on, basically trying to determine the scoring of the round. So he thinks he's going to win three. Everybody else has passed. So now the round's going to begin, in which case we'll move these off to the side. Uh, nobody has any points now. So we're going to start with zero here. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and start with a two card trick. And in a two card trick, you're going to be able to do a high card or a pair. And remember, the highest cards in the game are the aces of uh, that are purple so we're going to look it up so let's see if we got anything of interest we got so we got one ace here 
I got blue ace. Now we have to have them all the same color. So we've got queens. Let's go ahead and organize this hand as well, I suppose. Might as well, right? Jack, jack, 10, king. And there's a queen, 10, ace, king, 10, king, queen, queen. Now we got kings. So that actually might be a useful hand to start with. So we will put these back in order, but this player is gonna go with something a little more high bar. He's gonna choose these kings and he's gonna go ahead and place these cards down. And this player is gonna decide as well. And he's got queens, he's also got kings, and he's got jacks. And it's gonna be based on which ones he wants to play. Cause remember there's more tricks that are coming up, but we'll just say that he wants to do queens, okay? So he'll take these two purple queens uh, which probably will mess him up the least in this game. He's going to put these down face down, and each player has got their cards face down. And once everybody's placed their cards face down, then you can begin a betting round. And you're going to be betting based on the tricks that you've currently acquired. And in this case, no one has any tricks, so no one's going to bet any tricks. So we're just simply going ahead and placing these cards down. Remember, he needs to win three tricks. If he does not win three tricks, then every other player will score based on the number of tricks they successfully achieve in this game. If he does get three or more tricks, though, he will score three points. He can only score the amount of points based on the tricks that he said he was going to win. Flip these cards face up and determine the winner. And the winner is going to be this player here. He's got kings, he's got queens, and also the higher color. This would be purple, which is only based on if it's a tie. But in this case, kings are going to be out queens. So he will take the trick. He'll place these cards just like this. You can go ahead and set them however you want. I would suggest doing it uh, vertical, then horizontal, vertical, then horizontal to determine the tricks that you're going to win. And then we move on to the next trick, in which case we're doing three cards now. All right, three cards. Let's go ahead and actually show these cards uh, dealt out as well. Let's go ahead and organize these for him. And here we go. Nice and easy, I suppose. And uh, now we're going to go say, okay, so these are obviously that nobody sees their hands except for the players that own the cards, but we need three cards now. As you can see in the three card scoring, you got high card, pair, a straight, and a three of a kind. A straight is going to be three sequential cards, and a three of a kind is three of the same type of card with the same color. Do any of these players have that? Okay, so this player actually has got a king and a queen and a jack. So that might be his choice. He wants to win at least three tricks, remember, so he'll place these guys down. He's got an ace and a king, but no queen. And he's got a king and a queen, but no jack of that specific color. So this might not be a good hand for him to go in on. So maybe he will choose to get rid of cards that he doesn't think will be useful. Like, for instance, these tens are no good. And probably, well, no, he does have three cards. He does king queen and jack there we go he's got three cards they are gonna go face down now both players are gonna get a chance to bet he doesn't have any to bet it with but he can so maybe he thinks that his hand is better than his he can bet one trick now remember this player doesn't have any tricks to bet with so there's no point to doing so but if he did he could choose to also bet and just like in poker the person uh, who wins the trick will take all of the bets. There's also some other things that happen if there's ties and whatnot, but you can look at the rules specifically for that stuff. In which case, you'll flip over these cards once again, and we have a tie. King, Queen, Jack, King, Queen, Jack, but purple is higher than orange, so he once again will take this trick. Now that's two tricks he's got. You'll move on to now the four card bet. In this case here, I don't think both players have a whole lot. This player is missing a king. Uh, this player is missing a whole bunch of stuff. Well, he's got King, Queen, but no Jack, so he's missing a Jack here. So maybe he'll just go for something like this. We'll take the Kings and then he'll go ahead and put a high card that is a 10 and actually he, he, he does stuff stuff. He's got two Kings and he's got, uh, no, he's got two Kings. That's, that's about all he's got, I think, unless I'm missing something, but okay. So he's got two Kings. So we'll place that down. That's his pair. This player here has two tens and he'll go ahead and get rid of some other stuff. He doesn't think will be useful. And there we go. That's the next trick. Once again, we'll flip them over. Player who wins is going to have the person who has the most. He's got two tens and he's got two kings. So this player is going to win the trick now. Nice. One trick for him. And that's the basic idea of the game. It's going to keep going on. There'll be another five card trick. So we'll go ahead and just take five cards randomly and we'll flip them over. And okay, this player scored the trick. And then finally, the last one, these guys flip these cards over. And in which case, this would be the winning card compared to this one because blue is higher than green. So this player won the trick. And in this scenario, he got four tricks and he got one he's bet three which means he'll get three points so you'd actually go ahead and move his score tracker up to three but let's say he didn't get the trick so instead this player got ended up getting three and he got two in which case this player gets nothing and this player gets three points based on the number of tricks he has so he's got three one point for each trick so he would actually get three points instead and if he lost 
everybody would score points based on the tricks they acquired. And that's just kind of how it works. After that, you're gonna go ahead and take all these cards here, and then you're gonna go ahead and deal out another round of play. And in which case, the person who gets to 11 points is the winner. The only thing I didn't really get a chance to show you because they didn't come up are these wild cards, which are these guys here. That's a 10, but it's also a color of your choice. And those can be very, very useful in this specific game of Rainbow, the trick-taking poker style card game. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about Rainbow and what I thought about the game. Well, first of all, it's interesting because most of the tricks, the two, three, four, and one trick are pretty simple. It's going to be, the color is obviously more important than the card type because you need a specific type of color in order to be able to score points. And usually it's going to be stuff like this. You want to have uh, your ace, king, queen, jack, and ten, and you want them all to be in the same color. But only in the five uh, trick, the five card trick, is when you're going to need stuff like this here. This is a rainbow. It's the strongest of all of them. It's kind of like a royal flush if you get all these colors with the same type that's going to work for you as well as of course if you happen to have a wild of that type then that's also going to count as well but you want to try and i guess like organize the cards not as well that's what my cameraman said so I, I, i'll take his word for it but the game feels a little a lot like poker actually you're going to be playing cards as tricks you have 15 cards i would almost remind it reminds me kind of like like instead of seven card draw it's like 15 card draw but you're going to be playing five hands in 15 card draw so you're smushing together a trick taking game and of course poker at its core sense how do you want to function you're going to have this specific key which all you poker players out there will gra gasp uh, gasp will grasp this rather quickly you'll understand how it functions and you'll understand the different uh, ratios as to what cards work better than others and they've actually taken the time to make sure that the, the specific tricks will have specific ratios as to what's better and what's not as good and i think pretty much the only thing i'd have to say is you have to learn that in the game you have to realize okay this hand is actually more difficult to gather so i want to keep this for this specific trick and get rid of this for this specific one the single card is always good to have an ace that is of course purple because that's the highest of all of them but maybe you need that one so it's a lot of management at the start of the game and after you've managed your hand you're kind of like okay now i know exactly what tricks i want to play and it comes down to a bidding war what's interesting as well is the fact that you can be able to bid with your tricks for each round and you might bid five uh, tricks and if you do that and you actually win all five tricks you get an additional two points So that's another interesting little factoid there But it's hard and let's say you lose the first trick after betting five Well, you can still come back and the way that works is players are gonna want to take your bids if they think they can win because if they if they know you're going to lose and not get those five they get as many points as they gather tricks So it's like okay, it's worth it But on the off side even though you lost the first trick you can still come back and gather all the tricks you need in order to gather the points for winning five tricks in a row provided your hand is good enough and you're really good at playing poker i'm a poker player i've always liked uh well, I've always liked Texas Hold'em and I like five card draw and I played a lot with my uh, grandmother so I got the Uno and all that kind of stuff as well it kind of all fits together a little bit uh, but this one definitely has some shining poker qualities so you people who like poker are gonna like this game if you're a trick taking player you're going to enjoy this as well because it has that trick taking aspect to it just like a, the, the Camelot game tournament Camelot how you have all the cards in your hand and you have to decide where and when you want to play them it's not by hands and what you're playing it's actually each round you'll have a specific number of cards and then throwing that poker aspect in is really cool and really interesting. If you're not really a fan of poker, this is probably not going to interest you because there is a lot of poker added to this game. And it does feel like you're trying to play poker hands, whether they be single card all the way up to five cards. I enjoyed this game. I like this game. And for me and most of my Texas Hold'em player friends, we're going to be able to play this game in between larger tournaments or whatever. Something a little, little less uh, aggressively... Uh, uh, painstaking as far as the monetary thing goes we maybe put in some money for it i guess you could do that with this game as well but it's it's kind of a really relaxing fun little game there are some choices in which you're like oh no do i really want to give the opportunity for that specific high bidder at the beginning of the game a chance to score all those points kind of because instead of one point i can score three if he takes this bet oh does he have the rainbow does he not now what's interesting too is that I found was kind of interesting is, okay, I know in a, in a two player game specifically, if he bets five and I win the first hand, he's gonna get no points as long as I never go in on a bid. So if he bets me on all four of the other ones, uh, I just simply win, right? But I'm only gonna get one point. So sometimes it might be actually worth bidding even if I think that uh, 
I can just not have him get any points at all because I can score a lot more and it might be worth it. And I'm the type of player where I was never willing to do that. It was always like, I really want to because I have a rainbow, but maybe he has that higher rainbow, in which case he'll get all five as opposed to the, as opposed to only four, in which case I would win. So there's those brainstaking challenges and tasks you have to like mentally prepare yourself for throughout the game. Uh, a fun little game, definitely. Something that you guys should definitely check out if you like poker and you like trick-taking games. Rainbow! Cool, concise, exactly what I was expecting after reading the rules and I had no problems with it. I think most of you guys who see this game and know what it is are going to uh, know whether it's for you or not. Go ahead and check it out down below if this game is something of interest to you. Rainbow in the description. I enjoyed this one.